Yeah, the reason that I, I did that version, uh, which was a shuffle for You Win Again, I, I just felt like it needed to be something that would touch upon what my dad really loved about Ray Charles and about Eric Clapton, about a lot of those blues players and singers. And so I, I thought I would blend the two together and sing it with a little bit more of that type of soul. Obviously, I can't sing like Ray Charles, and I can't play like Eric Clapton, but to try to give it that salt and pepper was what I wanted to do. And so I'm holding just the A position here at the second fret, and I'm, and I'm muting as much as possible. Everything below is all dead, and that's dead, because I'm not on the A note, I'm right here. So I only want to play these two strings in the middle. That's it. There's not a book that teaches you that, but that's all I want. So as I'm doing a full strum, I'm only hitting the two strings and noting those two strings in the middle, which would be a, an E note and an A note. So I want to do that so I can do my, my, my chop, kind of a greasy Mississippi West Coast shuffle kind of rhythm. So I'm taking my pinky and hitting my my rock and boogie woogie thing, but I'm holding everything really tight so I don't have any overring. Nothing is ringing. Everything's tight. On the four chord, I use this particular four chord. It's a Django type of a uh, of a D chord that I learned from John Jorgensen, basically. And it's three notes. It's also, in a different type of uh, application, it's also a diminished chord. But it also makes a great, a great D chord, a great C chord, a great E7 chord. So it's really a great way to do it. So we started off with that. The news is out. I could use that chord for both my D and my E, and it makes a real cool swampy feel and uh, gives it that kind of boogie woogie Ray Charles blues player kind of a vibe. So uh, it made it made playing win again really cool, and I think I think my dad would have uh, would have loved it. <laughs> 